Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. All right. So I made my circle really big so you can see this. This is what it looks like. We made it. It was a personal um, cake topper class for a group of friends, which I thought was so cute that they craft together. Um, but you can see, do you see the, the layers right there and how there's like a little bit of depth, even though it's not like popping way out, but it is layered and there is um, a little bit of um, just some room so that actually in person it really it doesn't look flat at all it's very um 3d ish so all right so i'm going to make it smaller but i just want you to see what it looks like in person and what it looked like on the screen all right so i'm gonna make this smaller again because you don't need to see my big face <laughs> all right um in my head, I left it like this because this was, you know, like I said, it was for a private class. And I, in my head, I had remembered from a previous class with her that she wanted to do this cake topper and the colors were going to be, you know, like um, a magenta and a blue. So I sort of made everything of those colors. And when I cut this out, this right here, it was so one dimensional with like, the blues kind of running through. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess technically my idea didn't backfire because that's what I wanted. I wanted a blue theme running through and it was too much blue and everything was smushed together. So I didn't like that. I was, I ended up with, you know, the, the outline of the llama is yellow and green, which were not part of her colors at all. And then I ended up going with a, a little bit um i wanted to do print and cut because i wanted to add a little bit of blue right here but it ended up being too much blue so i switched it out with this cactus so all right i'm going to show you how to do everything today um first thing that i want to do is the name sadie if you notice here and if you follow me on instagram it's the useless crafter no spaces um i showed you what it looked like with just the pink sadie and then I showed you the two layers, the pink and the white, and then finally the three layers. And the, the three layers, it really does make a difference. For banners, cake toppers, I highly recommend um, the three colors stacked like this. But you can't do that in design space. So let's show you how to do that. First thing is anything um, with script, I use Font Lab Pad. This is a free download. So just Google Font Lab Pad and i will show you magic no <laughs> all right so you're gonna pick all your fonts this one is floristia so and it's from creative fabrica um i love that site i also get paid from that site so i get it if you don't believe me but i do love their fonts and it is for commercial use once you buy it so i like not being able not having to keep track of where i get my fonts the other thing that i really like about it is if you get a subscription from them that everything on the site is free um so it works kind of like cricket access in that way um but i have a code for 30 percent off if that's what you want to do so it's the useless crafter 30. all right Font Lab Pad. I use this even if it's not um, script because I find that in design space, the letters even for um, print, the spacing is too wide. So let's do Sadie. Look how cute that print is. I love it. Okay. But what's cool about Font Lab Pad is one, I mean, you know, I feel like we're creature of, creatures of habit. Um, I have a set of fonts that I always use. So like it's easy to, you know, flip through the fonts that you recently used to see if you like Sadie in some other font. Um, but, you know, I'd already done that. I like Floristia. I love this font. Okay. Once you have your font, what you want to do is you want to save as. And that saves the file as an SVG. I've already done that. Okay. So now we're going to Inkscape. I know if you're like, no, I don't want to do it. I get it. But the only thing I do in Inkscape is the offset. So I want to show you two things. First, let's bring in the name. So you're going to go to import and you're going to import the SVG file. Okay. So this is, this is Sadie. Now this works just like design space. You want to make sure that the image is locked so that when you make it bigger, it's, it's bigger proportionately. Um, so I locked it and I made it really big for us to see, right? 
All right, so right now the words, the name Sadie is highlighted. So you wanna use your, do you wanna take your cursor outside of that area in the white and just click once so that that image is not selected anymore. And you want to scroll down and hit, um, sorry, my, the recording buttons right there. What you wanna do is you wanna scroll down and hit this paint bucket. So click on the paint bucket. It doesn't matter what color it is, just pick any color. Um, and the reason is once we take it into design space, we can obviously change the colors there. Okay, so I picked this hot pink. You can see right here, it's the hot pink. Let me close this. Um, and what you wanna do is you wanna go up here. This is grow or shrink by. I like doing my first one at 20. That means it's going to give you an, a growth of 20. So I'm going to click on this S. And do you see how it, and then I'm going to click on this and the heart. The heart's not attached, so I need to click on that. So now I have my 20, right? Go and click your arrow. And you want, right now my heart's selected, right? So I want to, again, click in this white area so that I'm not, I don't have anything selected at this moment. We're going to click on the paint bucket again. And we're going to pick a different color this time. Okay, and then I'll make it bigger, sorry. And then this time I want to go up to 40. So from my original image, I got a growth of 20, and now I'm going to get a growth of 40, okay? So here's my S, and here's my 80, <laughs> okay? All right, go to your arrow. And what you want to do now is you want to grab the whole thing, go to Path, and click on Object to Path. And I've noticed when I don't do that, when I try to bring this into design space, I don't get all my layers, which totally defeats the purpose of offsetting, right? Okay, so go to File, Save As. I've already saved it, okay? Um, so we have Sadie. Now, I also want to do that llama. So let's do a new one. So now this should be feel like a repeat for you, okay? So we're going to go to File. You need to bring in your image. So I already have my little llama um, and it was just called oh there it is okay now here's my cute little guy again you want to lock it so I'm gonna make it bigger just so that we can see this thing okay and again click your cursor in the white so that we're not this thing this llama is not selected and then go to your paint bucket mm -hmm. Let me make this bigger. Okay, go to your paint bucket, pick any color, and then I'm gonna change this to 20. I do the 20 first, just um, I find that it just makes it easier for me. All right, so let's click on this little guy. There's the head. We want to get everything to offset, okay, at, at the border. I don't care about this blanket, right, because it's inside. It doesn't matter. But we want to get his feet. Okay, and then we're good. Click on the arrow. Go into the white so that nothing's selected. Paint bucket. Pick a different color. Go to 40 this time. And again, click on his. This time, everything was already connected, so we have our offset. We're good. File save as and remember whatever you save it as that's how we're we need to find that file to upload it into design space i've already saved it okay so now let's go into design space i'm going to show you how to do that so you're going to go to upload upload image browse and you're going to find where you saved it right so i know let's see it was in my desktop i've already done this but i want to just show you what it looks like i think i called it llama offset so I can remember. It's getting to be so much. Um, all right, so these are not it. Here it is, my llama offset. And I had to do it a couple times because I one time I left off the tail. I didn't get the offset of that. <laughs> so you click on that, click open, or you could double click. And here's our my little guy. Great, save. And we're going to import this one, which I've already done over here. We're also going to import the name. Okay, and then insert images. And okay, here we go. So this guy over here, I'm just going to scroll down so we can see. Let's go to ungroup. 
So our 40 offset, right, is this red, red. So let's move him over. Now we don't want all these open spaces, so just go to contour and hide all, and then click X, and there. We got rid of all those bubbles, right? Now look at the pink. The pink came in multiple pieces, right? So on the left hand, right, I'm sorry, right hand side panel, let's select all of them. So here's the first one, hit the shift key and just go down your panel over here and select all of that pale pink and weld. Okay, so we got this guy, same thing. Go to contour, hide all, exit out of it and then we have our solid surface so see our little offset it's going to be great this guy right now is in all these layers so it's an SVG I want it as a print and cut so I'm going to select the whole item and actually before I do that um, oh no I'm good I'm gonna flatten And you see how before he had all those different colors? Now look at where he is. He is cut print. So I'm gonna move him over here. Now what I like to do is while I'm still designing, whenever there's an offset, I grab all the pieces, go to align and you wanna center it so that it's perfectly centered. Then I group it. So as I'm moving this guy to see where I wanna put him, Everything moves together. And also when I wanna make him bigger or smaller, then I'm making all three layers bigger bigger and smaller. So I, I like to group my layers, okay? Okay, so there is that one. Let's go get the name. Same thing with the name. Let's bring it down here so we can see it. Okay, so Sadie, I always like to look over here to see what I have. Um, so Sadie is our, top layer are 40, right, are 40 offset. So let's grab this one, this one, and this one and weld it because we want it to be one piece. So there's our one layer. Here's our purple layer. Same thing with the purple. I want the heart to be attached to the name. And I'm okay because this is so close together. I'm okay with just grabbing that S and also welding it. So now this is all one piece. And then this is the name. I'm gonna grab this and I'm also gonna weld that. All right, so here's the name. So cute, right? Um, you can change the colors here if you know what, what colors you wanna do. I ended up doing my, this layer was going to be kind of like this color. It's a magenta glitter. Then my middle layer, I did white. I like, I don't like to do glitter with a glitter background. So um, it really, you, you don't get the extra shimmer. It's just too much going on and you can't see anything. And then my last layer is just a solid, regular turquoise uh, or teal cardstock. Okay, so grab all three, go to align, center, and then group it so that this, the name is all moving together. All right, so let's go pull in our cactus. So go to images and let me make this smaller. Go to images and let's search the cactus. Okay, I liked this one. I like having anything with like slits in it because then you have another layer of color coming through. And I love doing that mix of glitter cardstock versus non-glitter. Um, I think it, it's really pretty. So I like this one. We'll get rid of the pot because I didn't want the pot. Um, and then let's look for the other two that I end up using. And I think I can find it. Um, there was a... This one. It was print and cut and I thought it would be cute because I was gonna have glitter cardstock, regular cardstock. I thought another print and cut would be cute, but it wasn't. But I'm gonna bring it in just so that you could see it. And then there was this one. This one's the same thing with the idea of being able to do two colors. So I'm gonna insert the images 
And I'm going to bring in one more thing. I wanted the sombrero. And then that's it. And then we're done. So let's go to images. And, and I thought this was cute. Now, the cool thing about picking things that are SVG files is that you can later on change these colors before you change it to print and cut. So I did that as a print and cut because it was so many different colors. I didn't want to deal with the different layers. And it's sitting on top of a cardstock cactus and with glitter. So it held up on its own and was super cute. All right. So now we have all our pieces. Let's make let's fix this cactus make him a little bit bigger okay so i'm going to show you this is all attached but i don't want a pot in my thing so i'm going to bring in let me see if i can bring it in nope okay so let's make this smaller i'm going to bring in a circle because i'm going to slice so what I'm going to do is unlock this guy, stretch it out a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to bring it down here. And I basically want to slice off this pot. Okay. So when you're slicing, you can only slice two things at one time. It's going to be my circle and this image. So I'm going to grab these two items. And I'm going to slice. And let's get rid of our slice results. I don't want that. I don't need anything from my oval. Okay, but my black, I want to go to contour. I want to get rid of this pot, so I'm just selecting on it, and I don't need this anymore. I'm going to go back over here. This part I sliced out, so what I want to do is I want to make it whole again. And I'll show you what I mean. Sorry. Remember my circle? This is part of the oval that was sliced out. So I want to bring it back together. So just grab the two pieces. Oops, I grabbed too much. Okay, and weld. And it's now together. It's now one piece. Now, um, I wanted the top layer to be a different color, so I'm going to duplicate this because I want a solid background in the back. So I'm going to hit contour and hide all. And now I have my solid, right? So on this one, I think I did the top layer was a light green glitter. And this one was a dark green regular. So I'm going to do something like that. And it, this one's obviously on top, right? So I'm going to arrange them to the front. Technically, in Design Space, it doesn't matter whether this is sitting on top or the other one's sitting on top. But from a design perspective, I find that it's easier for me to see it the way it's going to be um, layered in real life. So let's grab those two, align, center, and group. So now these two are moving together, OK? So now we basically have all our pieces. I decided that I didn't like this, but because it was a class that I was teaching, I prepped this ahead of time. So I did a, a background layer. Let me show you what that looks like over here. See, here's my background. It's just one solid color that everything else sits on top. I had already cut, I had already done the background with this. So what I ended up doing was finding a cactus that looked similar to that, which was this one. But you see how it's the opposite. This one's, um, oh no, this one's this one, sorry. Where's my other guy? Oh, did we not fix it yet? Where's my other cactus? Oh, he's over here. We didn't do this guy yet. Okay, so let's make him bigger. So this one was very similar to this, except that the lower branch is on the other side. So just go to flip, flip horizontal, right? And the original one was also fatter, right? So unlock it. And let's stretch him out so that he looks just like our original cactus. And that's not so bad. You can trim that later, right? So that's what I did with this guy. Um, so we can get rid of this one. 
All right, I want to show you a couple of things. Um, so this one was over here. Sadie was in front. And right now, I'm really not concerned with how big everything is. Like, I think this cactus is ginormous. Um, yeah, it's 10 inches by nine. Um, but I just want everything proportionate to one another. And then together, we'll shrink it later to make sure that it's under 11 and a half inches. Because 11 and a half inches for a cake topper is very big. Um, okay, so I wanted this guy back here. Make him a little bit bigger. I'm going to move him over, but he's not moving. Okay. Something like this. And then this guy, let's make him a little bit bigger. And let's change him to the right color also. I think I did the front is, oh, I did it opposite. I'll just pick a green. Does that match too much? Okay. And I don't like to line everything up. So I, you know, some maybe something like this. So the cactus are on different um, heights and the llama is by itself different too. Okay. And then the hat, this hat is super cool. So look at all the layers. All you have to do is let's say you don't, you don't want this red theme. So this red over here, start changing the colors to things that you like. Um, let's do this one and make it light green. I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> just pick different, you know, I'm just picking whatever colors, but what I like about it is you can, you can change all your colors and then grab the hat and flatten it and it becomes a print and cut piece. So that's what I love about this. So then I put the hat on. I always like things to be a little uneven on purpose so that I don't have to worry about it not being even. So something like that. Okay. Then there, there it is. So what you have to do is there are a couple items that are um, print and cut. On print and cut, to do a solid background, let's do that first. Let's make sure that this is the right size. So let's say you like this. Um, the biggest one is 18 inches because it's 18 by 15. So I'm going to make 18, 11 and a half inches. And I usually do two inches smaller than what the cake is. So if the cake is um, a 12 inch cake, then I would do a cake topper that's 10 inches. So that gives you one inch on each side and then in is your cake topper. So that's my normal go-to. So let's say this is your cake topper and you're happy with this then I would grab the whole thing and duplicate it. So this is to make that background, okay? So that everything sits on top. So then also, do you see my background? This is the stick and it goes on the background. Everything else goes on top, all the different colored layers. And that makes it really solid. This is one stick and look how solid that is. It's twisting, nothing's flapping. I, I love it. Okay, so let's move this aside so you can see how to do the background. Now, normally, if we don't have anything print and cut, you can just grab this whole thing and weld it. But welding is not an option right now because we have some print and cut items. So basically, your print and cut items, you have to make it not print and cut. So you got to unflatten everything. So I'm going to unflatten the hat. I think that's good. This llama, we can ungroup him because we don't need, we don't need the llama. Where is my llama? There he is. We could actually just delete that because we only need the outline, right? So I think now I can grab everything and weld. Perfect. So this is our solid background that everything is sitting on top. Now for print and cut items, this llama is my one print and cut, right? But it has these two offsets that it's going to be sitting on. So that way it's going to make, because you're printing on regular printer paper, so it's really thin and it tends to curl up easily, like depending on how you take it off your mat. So I do like to do double-sided tape and put it onto a onto cardstock to make it flat and sturdy. So this llama has the two um, outlines already, but this hat doesn't, right? So I wanna duplicate this hat for a second and I'm gonna unflatten it 
and grab the whole thing and weld it. So now, you know, design space is crazy. Every time I've messed with this hat, it's given me a crazy figure. It's supposed to be a solid outline like this. So this will just be regular cardstock, any color. I would probably make it the same color as my background so that it cuts all on one. And then um, I would, once I, once I send this to the printer and have it cut, I would then tape it to this so that it's very stable and not just like a curled up piece of paper, okay? All right, so now that we have all our pieces, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to make it. So I'm gonna delete all this over here. We were recreating this top piece. So we don't need this guy either. So I think this is what I did. And this hat goes down a little bit lower. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we go to make it. Okay, so let's just look at our layers. Here's our white. You can move this over, save some space. Here's our background. Our llama, our different cactus. Yep, I mean, I think this is pretty standard for anyone that's been using the Cricut, right? Ooh, my screen got so dark. Um, but what you probably, if you haven't done print and cut, this is how you do it. So you, you continue to the next screen. It says no device found, but that's okay. Let's look at this print and cut. You're gonna click send to printer. And add bleed, yes. So leave it green like this. And then you're gonna hit print. It's gonna print, okay? So let's just pretend we did hit it. Then we wanna print the next item, our hat. Send to printer, print. Then I'm gonna plug in my machine. Once you plug in your machine, then you're going to, there's gonna be a button up here that says, I've already printed. So when you click on that, then I'll ask you, it'll be very familiar, it'll look like this screen where once I plugged it in, it'll ask you what material are you cutting. So I would put, I usually do light cardstock, less de less of a um, of pressure, and then it cuts out beautifully. And then you just continue to cut out everything else. All right, so I hope that was helpful. I will see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>